The Deliverance was the brand new Netflix original film that came out two weeks ago, but I finally had a chance to watch it for you guys. This comes from uh, director Lee Daniels, who's known for creating the show Empire, as well as directing films like uh, The United States versus Billy Holiday and Precious. This movie is loosely based on a true story. The film is led by the character of Ebony, played by Andre Day, who is a struggling single mother in the Pennsylvania neighborhood as she's raising her three kids by herself. Andre, played by Anthony B. Jenkins, Nate, played by Caleb McLaughlin, and Shantae, played by Demi Singleton. Uh, Ebony's mom has also moved into the house, Alberta, played by Glenn Close. But something keeps happening. They moved into their new house, and for some reason, the kids are acting weird. Is the house making them act weird or is it some abuse coming from their mother? Also in the movie is Anjanoon Ellis Taylor who play who plays a reverend who is trying to help out the situation at the home. You have Monique playing Cynthia Henry, someone who's trying to watch over and make sure the kids are in the safe hands. And Omar Epps plays Melvin, someone who is a love interest to Alberta. The film is an hour and 52 minutes long and is rated R. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here at Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Denneberg. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. We're trying to get to 250 subscribers. So please like the video. Uh, sorry, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. I talk all things movies, TV shows, box office, out of theater reactions, and movie franchise rankings. So please subscribe, ring the bell. If you're new to the channel, comment down below. What are your thoughts on The Deliverance? First of all, have you watched it yet on Netflix? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, if you have not seen it, tell me, did you just, have you even heard that this movie hit Netflix? Let me know in the comments section and also please like the video. So I did miss, I've been a little bit busy the last two weeks. So I am now catching up on some streaming movies that I have missed over the last two or three weeks. And The Deliverance was one of them. I never saw a trailer for the movie. I only knew the cast and that Lee Daniels did it. So I didn't see a trailer. I knew obviously the posters, there's a cross, I knew there's some Christian element to the movie, but I did not know anything about the movie. Now, I don't know if that was my biggest mistake, honestly. Maybe if I knew what it was, I'm not gonna be as harsh on it, but um, sadly guys, um, I absolutely hated my time watching this movie. Um, most people have been negative for the movie, but not, all you know one of the worst movies i believe that this is one of the worst movies of the year and it's really unfortunate because i really love the ensemble that lee daniels got for this movie he is over two with andre day sadly and what's sad about it is andre day has absolutely delivered in both the films directed by Lee Daniels, um, even though she won the golden globe and i loved her in the united states versus billy holiday as Billie Holiday, overall, that was not a very good biopic. And while I enjoyed her performance, the movie was not very good. And once again, she is clearly the MVP of this movie. When the movie is completely unwatchable, she keeps it as watchable as it can be. Um, obviously, Andre Day is one of the most talented people working. She's a singer, plus being an actress. Um, and I believe that she needs to really, not needs, she should continue in Hollywood as an actress because she's really terrific, but I do think she needs to choose some better projects uh, moving forward because this one was not for me. But um, Ebony is the most interesting character going in the movie and Andre Day is by far and away the strongest performance going in the movie. The strongest dynamic going on is the mother-daughter relationship between Ebony and Alberta, uh, between Andre Day's character and Glenn Close. And, um, when this movie wants to throw you into the mystery of what's really going on with the kids, is it just this abuse from their mother or is there something going on in the house? That could have been a great movie. And that this is one of the more frustrating, awful movies I've seen all year because in most awful movies, you don't really see a great movie in there, but you do in this movie. There are some really good character, interesting characters, interesting enough characters. Um. The first hour of this movie is extremely dull and boring, but what was interesting was the mother-daughter relationship. Why the pattern of abuse, um, does that give someone, the younger person of the generation of abuse, an excuse on what, how they can treat their kids? Um, there's a lot of good, interesting themes that the movie talks about for five minutes, 
But sadly, this becomes a full-fledged exorcism-like movie in the last 50 minutes of the film. And this was a weird experience because the first hour of the movie is very well made. It's a boring, dull movie, but it's extremely well acted and well made. But out of nowhere, once the horror movie happens and we get the cliche, I mean, the, the last 50 minutes of the movie, which is becomes basically an exorcism movie, you've seen in a billion other exorcist-like or conjuring-like movies. But out of nowhere, this movie felt completely amateur in the way the movie looks, the overusage of CGI. I mean, this movie went from looking really good to looking abysmal in the last 50 minutes of the movie. And I don't, I can't remember in a long time when I watch a movie where half of it looks like one of the more gorgeous movies you'll see on Netflix. And then the last hour feels like, or the, the other half of the movie comes off as more as like an amateur college film than a professionally made movie. This was shocking to me watching the film. Um, and because the movie completely goes all in on the exorcism part of the film, you lose all credibility because I think the movie could have been really good if you kept going back and forth between is this an unreliable narrator? Is maybe Ebony being, you know, she isn't, she makes decisions in the first two acts of the movie which don't make her maybe the greatest mother of all time, let's just say. And there are times where you're kind of questioning, is it the house that's making the kids go crazy or is it their own mom? If the movie stuck with you, not under, not knowing what's going on from that perspective, it could have been a great movie. And that's the only thing that kept me wanting more out of this film in the first hour was understanding what happened. But when the movie answers that this is plainly just going to be an exorcism movie with people crawling up on walls and people, you know, getting um, taken over by the devil. Uh, and then the dialogue, the dialogue is brutal in this movie. And it's really brutal, sadly, for one of the most talented actresses in this movie, which is Anjanine Ellis Taylor, who plays the Reverend, who knows the history of the house that the family is living in and she wants to help out. She gets some cringeworthy, hilariously stupid dialogue. Like I laughed a lot at her dialogue and she is trying to be dead serious. And again, I love Anjanine Ellis, not her fault whatsoever. Uh, the movie has strikingly awful dialogue towards the last 50 minutes of the movie. And I honestly was just shocked watching this entire film because this has an all-star cast with multiple Oscar winners or Oscar nominees in the cast. And then you have Lee Daniels as one of the most accomplished filmmakers of the last 20 years. And he's from Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia. The movie kind of takes place in that Pittsburgh, Philadelphia area. And um, Glenn, I mean, all these people signed up for this. And for me, this was brutal to watch. The overuse of CGI for the exorcism stuff is awful. There's a, literally a scene where a person gets up and walks on the wall. And it feels like you're watching a first draft of what the scene should be. And, but you're, th this is the movie. And that's what it felt like. The last 50 minutes felt like a first draft, both from a production, CGI, and script level of what was supposed to happen. And they were just kind of like, well, we'll just, we'll just do it. So this movie did not deliver for me. Um, this is easily one of the worst movies of the year. There's some really wonky performances, awful dialogue. And when it gets to become an exorcism movie, it becomes one of the worst 50 minutes of film I probably have seen all year. So I hate to be this harsh, you know me, I'm a very positive person and I was excited actually to check this one out, but this left me more shocked in an awful reason than shocked in a, in a good way. So I'm sadly gonna give the Deliverance a 0.5. Yes, 0.5 out of five. I'm going 14% for this new film. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments section and I will see you guys soon.